queries are objects or tools that let us ask questions about the information in our database. Let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with queries. Now, using queries, we can choose to see only the data from certain fields in a table. For example, just the customer last name and phone number from a customer table. Queries can include fields from multiple related tables. For example, a query of customer and invoice tables that show us the customer last and first names for all invoices. We're going to show you how to do this and more with queries, but let's start off just by creating a simple query. We want to query the invoices table to show just the invoice number and the invoice total. One way to create a new query is to click on the Queries tab in the database window and then click on the New button. A new query dialog box offers some choices, including some different query wizards. Now we're going to use the simple query wizard. So we double click on it and a dialog box opens. From the list of available tables and queries, we select the invoices table. We double click on the invoice number and invoice total fields to select them. Then we click on Next to display the next dialog box. We do want to see every field of every record, so we leave Detail selected. Then we click on Next to display the last dialog box. We'll use the default title, Invoices Query. We're done. So we click on Finish. Access creates the query and displays the results in datasheet view. It shows just the invoice number and invoice total for each invoice. The title bar shows that this is a select query, meaning that it selects records. Access calls the results of this query a record set because it's a set of records selected by the query. Working with a record set is just like working with, well, it's like working with a table. We can select and edit records and even print the record set. And this information is still connected to the records in the invoices table, so changes to query data will automatically change the data in the table and vice versa. Well, now we want a query to include the invoice due date. To make this change, we're going to switch to design view. The view button is set for design view, so we click on it. The top portion of the design view window shows the table that we included in the query with a list of fields. The field name in boldface is the primary key field. We'll explain the asterisk in just a moment. The bottom portion of the query window is a grid. Each column in the grid can include a field name, the table the field comes from, and instructions that tell Access how to use the field in the query. The show checkbox lets us control whether or not a query field displays in datasheet view. To add the due date field to the query, we just drag it to the grid. The pointer changes to a small rectangular box representing the field. We want it to be the second field in the query, so we drop it there. The invoice total field moves over to the third column. If we want to add all the fields of a table, we can just drag the asterisk to the grid. To view the updated query, we just click on the View button. The data sheet view shows the invoice number, due date, and invoice total for each invoice. And notice that the record set is sorted by invoice number because it's the primary key field in the invoices table. So far, we've created queries that use data from one table. Bingo. Bongo. Now what we want to do is create a query that uses data from multiple tables. We want the record set to also show the customer's last name for each invoice. But that information comes from a different table, the customer's table. To add that table to the query, we first switch back to design view. Next, we'll use the show table button. When we click on it, the show table dialog box displays. And as you can see, not only can we query tables, we can also query other queries. Now, we'll add the customer's table. So we double click on it, and the field list appears in the design view window. Then we close the show table dialog box. The two field lists automatically display with a relationship line because of the relationship we created earlier. The relationship tells Access which customer's last name goes with which invoice number. Now we'll add the last name field to the table. A quick way to add a field to the next available column is just double click on it. When we do, it's added to the query. Then we switch to the record set. The 
the last name information from the customer's table is added. And notice that the record set is now sorted by customer ID. That's because it's the primary key field of the primary table in the query. Now, I know it might seem confusing since that field isn't displayed in the query. But it's not a problem because we can sort a query by any field we want. Now, in the next topic, we're going to show you how.